Yeah. You you ought, what you ought to do is name your mice or your little mouse Mr. Jangles. Uh, I got to name it after a dead person because it's now dead. No, it's the, it, it, well, oh, did he die? Well, didn't well, Mr. Jangles it, uh, die, what's too? What's his name, Michael, uh, whatever it was, in the Green Mile? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know. Him. To heal him. <laughs> that was you. All right. Dude, I was yeah. trying to go with you. Mr. Jangles and John Coffey was the guy who healed everybody? John yeah. Coffey. Yeah. By the way, I've been trying to hang up on him for about 30 seconds, but we okay. can't hang up See with ya. the mouse today. I Bunches. sure would like some of that cornbread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who was up for that role, by the way? Who actually had, who had got a callback for that role, mm. as well as getting a callback for Fat Albert? Patrice got a callback, and I'm like, how did they go? John Coffey, Fat Albert, I can understand. Patrice is a big guy, yeah. But John Coffey was like the guy they got would look like an NFL linebacker, like a big muscular guy, yeah. And Patrice, who is a big fellow, yeah, hasn't lifted weight since 1985 <laughs> when he was a junior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> big clumsy fat ass. <laughs> He really thinks he's up for this part of this <laughs> strapping bodyguard type murderer? Uh, that is hysterical that Patrice is on TV a lot, always as a convict. <laughs> the guy plays more convicts in TV shows than, than I've ever seen. Or bouncers at the door. Patrice is the king of bouncers. At the, the bouncer door. role? Yeah, always. He gets the bouncer role, too? I'll tell you, if you need someone to go, <clears throat> let me see your ID. <laughs> no one does it better than Patrice O'Neill. Or walk in the background when someone's on one of those phones through the plexiglass in the prison. He's like walking in the background to go, hey, what? I think, I think that's Patrice. <laughs> Bob on Long Island. What's up, Bob? What's going on, Owen? Hey, hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. What's going on? Hey, I heard, uh, I was listening to Scott and Todd yesterday. They were talking about uh, uh, the Hot 97 saying, oh, it's disgusting, it's ridiculous. And then they were like, oh, and the other guys uh, talking about, uh, what is that, Governor Cody from Jersey? Talking about him, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, the other guy's talking about him uh, and his crazy wife putting babies in the microwave and stuff like that. They probably dude. mean the Jersey guys, dude, not us. Yeah. What, what's that? The, I think the guys they mean, I don't know what they're called, but they're in New Jersey on uh, 1015 or something. Uh, oh, they're getting some airtime. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know, remember that conversation you guys had a while back about, you know, how crazy his wife was, right? Yeah, yeah, we we have audio of it, but I'm saying I think that he's this time talking about the, the Jersey because the Jersey governor had a problem with it. Well, well it is a fact. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, you know, it's, he it, was just going like the other guys. You know, uh, I figured uh, he was talking about you guys. <laughs> yeah, but no, what, did, did he say the other guy? Did he say O and A or did no, he say Jersey? No, no, no he, he is going to prolong this just to aggravate you. He made a reference you. of uh, the satellite radio. Oh, oh, oh okay. Right, thank I, you. We Bob. had the audio, and I know he had <laughs> referred to that. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Welcome. Thank you. Jimmy's such a prick. Yeah, another guy that we used to uh, work on the same radio station with is in trouble. We know for a fact uh, the Jersey guys. You know, I'll tell you this much because we 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 do try to be very honest on this program. When Howard talks about people ripping them off and clones and stuff, that is a reality in radio. There are a lot of guys that will not come up with their own stuff. <laughs> will surf the internet. Will listen to other radio shows and just blatantly copy what they're doing. Right. That is a fact. Our whole argument with Howard was no way is he gonna is he gonna paint us uh, as one of those uh, radio shows. No effing way. Okay. Uh -huh. But it does happen all the time. Uh, there's a bunch of hacks in this business that they feel like ah, it's a it's a a radio show that's not heard in my area and they're doing this cool bit. We're just gonna take that bit. It's it is a reality. Yeah. Okay. And these uh, these guys, the Jersey guys. They flat out take a lot of elements from our radio show and just and just do it on their show. They and then the, uh, a and then a, a bunch sounds. and a bunch of our listeners have gotten through to their program and and they're like, yo, you know, Opie and Anthony came up with the silent game, which we did, and Opie and Anthony came up with this and that. It's stuff that we could easily prove we came up with. It didn't come from anywhere else. And they're like, oh no, no, it's cool because we're kind of friends with those guys and it's cool. It's cool. It's yeah. not cool. That's they, what they say. They use um. They use the ping pong sound effect for callers. They use the bowling sound effect for callers. They have um, a train. It's not the one we use, but uh, something along those lines. And they use a lot of the same movie drops that we use. Yeah. And then, same movie drops. Oh, my God. God forbid someone else uses movies. I mean, you know, then you got to, like, you can't get too picky. I mean, movie no. drops are, you know, a lot of shows use them. And, you know, it's it's the obvious ones. You're not going to play a, a bad movie clip, right? Yeah. Now, you guys play some pretty obscure ones, though, man. You don't you don't go with the the obvious in a lot of them. You have Hello, Exactly. That There's no one else in the country playing hello, that. Hello, Exactly. There's no one playing that but you guys. Guaranteed. You will be molested. Right. And we're, and we're constantly updating our entire show. Our movie drops everything. So, But, uh, you know, this guy, uh, Craig, you know, whatever. Good luck to you. But you are a hack. You know it. 
You know you're a hack. You were a hack when you were at NEW. You couldn't get it going, and you're a hack at... Uh, a hack is like the worst thing to be called. He's Ugh. a hack. Who wants to be a hack? He's a hack. A floating Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> so he's getting a lot of attention today. Uh, New Jersey Governor Al Sock Jock, who calls my wife crazy. New Jersey Governor Richard Cody. This is something that was brought up on our show. That's why I'm very suspicious, by the way. Jimmy brought this audio in a while ago, and no one else was playing it. It was just something that Jim Bob picked up on. Uh, New Jersey Governor Richard Cody yesterday came out swinging at a shock jock who suggested on the air that the state's first lady was crazy because she once suffered from postpartum depression. This is the exact break we did. We played the audio, and she is crazy. She's out of her mind, the yeah. stuff she was saying. That bitch is nuts. Do we have the audio? <laughs> She's nuts. Here, this is the audio, by the way. Yeah, listen to some of this. The news piece. How, what, what news piece is this? The, where Jimmy got the audio. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, it's a long one. Where's the short clips? We couldn't find. We only had the raw one. He fast forward through it because it was just her oh, talking about certain. This is a story of near tragedies and everyday triumphs. She overcame homicidal thoughts about her firstborn son, suicidal thoughts about herself, and found understanding doctors and a husband, all of whom appeared to work no less than a miracle. Poor bastards. Yeah, how about Kevorkian? I felt like I was some kind of monster. Um, I had a, a scary thought about putting the baby in the microwave and I'm done. She sat down in her living room with her husband. <laughs> See, that's that's a crazy woman talking. Sorry. And then how does the governor handle it? I'll punch you in the face! Oh, there's a healthy couple running New Why Jersey. Are you? <laughs> she wants to murder the baby and I'll punch anybody who decides to criticize her. I'm acting Governor Dick Cody to share with me her lifelong journey through depression. Earlier, we heard about this school teacher's own humiliations from her third grade teacher, about how she first recognized her depression and how she was willing to give up her child. But medications turned that around for Mary Jo Cody for a while and then they failed her oh. and I had the baby down below me in the water and I thought I could drown him in a minute and I thought to myself I've had it again I'm done and I decided the hospital didn't work for me I'm going to commit suicide but you know, she that's I'm the governor's wife suicide. Yep. and she almost she was gonna drown the baby I wouldn't mind her as much if she wanted to kill the little top but at least speak properly you South Jersey idiot <laughs> <laughs> gonna drown the baby are you I didn't even notice that uh, she mispronounced. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, st I was gonna stab the baby, and then threw him out the window. Idiot! I was just waiting for her to say. <laughs> God Almighty! Um, how, how, how long has Cody been married to Voss? <laughs> I was gonna drown her. I was hoping she was and gonna say, "I put the the baby in the <laughs> put the baby in the microwave." Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, she puts the baby in the microwave. She does this when she's told. Went to her doctor one more time. So then she said, well, let me try you on one more antidepressant called an MAO inhibitor. And um, she said, I didn't want to recommend it for you because it has dangerous side effects. You could get a stroke. And then two weeks later, I started giving Kevin a bath, and I didn't have a scary thought. I thought, this is kind of amazing that I could give him a bath and I could feed him and I don't worry about smothering him. It came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not what nuts. Line. What a line. <laughs> could you imagine? Wow. You're just a little tot, have no idea what's going on in mommy's head as you're just trying to figure it all out. Oh, geez. You're just <laughs> you're herking and jerking on your back like a little Ben. <laughs> and she's like proud that she didn't kill you? Holy hell. Hey, I didn't kill him. When Cody, <laughs> that. when Cody comes home from work, does he go, how was your day? Honey, I bathed the baby and I didn't want to murder it. Oh, oh. give us a hug, would you? <laughs> You know the husband just leaves the house every day going, oh my God, what am I going to come home to? Is this the day I get the phone call? Is this the day I come home, the baby's drown, and uh, my wife has a knife through her chest? <laughs> right. Can I make one point, too? The next no, day, we're gonna, are you going through? Yeah, okay. we're going to get back into okay. that in a second. Wow. It, we're just trying to get through some of this audio. It's just, what a kook. She is a kook. <laughs> She is absolutely a nut. You're the innocent little baby smiling up at your mom, your, <laughs> your loving mom, and she has thoughts like this in her head. Wonderful. It came down to trial and error with various drugs. By his first birthday, I was looking forward to giving him a party. Uh -oh. So it came about, it wasn't like one day I woke up and I wasn't depressed. It was like the thoughts started to fade. And when the thoughts started to fade, then I started to feel like I deserved a baby. And that's how the depression kind of faded out. She would have a second child, Christopher, going oh. off drugs but <laughs> taking shock therapy to tide her over the last oh days of her pregnancy. Oh, my God. <laughs> shock therapy? 
What? A, maybe you shouldn't have a second kid. Just my opinion. Yeah, right. If you had thoughts <laughs> of, of killing, killing the first, the first one, one <laughs> and know that in order to have the second one, you got to go off your drugs, right? Perhaps you should just maybe. Not not have a goddamn kid. Might not kid. be the best thing. And get shocked there. But who does she hang out with? A six foot five Indian who doesn't talk to anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you want to oh. watch the game? <laughs> you want to watch the ball game, do you, Governor? <laughs> Just put your hand up. <laughs> Show her you can do it. <laughs> oh, man. God, I, I'm what glad we not... have the long form audio. I haven't heard all this. She is a kook. She's a kook. You are a kook. Yeah, because having another child isn't going to add stress into your life. No. And now she has more choices. Do I kill the first one or the second one? <laughs> That's it. She's going to butcher knife any, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is an advantage, though, because if oh. you get mad and you drown one, you can just like show the other one to the husband and hope he doesn't notice that one's Look, missing. Still got one. Yeah. Just Pregnancy. never, never have them in the same but room at the same Mary time. Jo Cody hit rock bottom when she talked about putting her firstborn in a microwave or drowning him in the pool. Listen to how her depression changed on her just a couple of years ago. And it got worse and worse as the days went on. And I just, I just told my psychiatrist. I called him up and I said, I just, I'm not making it. I'm, I can't face the day. So she upped my, she upped my antidepressants. Too much, and I had seizures, and then I went into a coma. She was rushed to the hospital, oh her husband joining her soon after. And so when I got there, I would best describe it, the scene in the room as uh, Me the kicking the plug out of the wall without <laughs> cursing, and she was violent, um, screaming. Yeah, couldn't understand what she was saying. Her eyes weren't focused anywhere, any place, any wow. person. Help me, written in her stomach. And there was six people trying to hold her down. And they were having a tough time doing that. Hot. Um, we eventually got an open vein into her, but all the drugs that we pumped into her couldn't calm her body. I, I, and the physician total said, recall you know, in the chair. I've got to put her into a coma, otherwise she's going to lose some oxygen to the brain. There's going to be permanent brain damage. After seven days, an anesthesiologist finally came up with a drug scheme that held promise. Her eyes opened, but didn't focus on anyone. Oh, they said, listen. Oh, well, try for about two hours, you know, talk to her, give her commands. And um, the sweat was pouring off myself and him and the nurses in the room. And, uh... Oh, getting a little choked up. He said, Very do you calm. love me? He said, do you love me? And I said, yes. <laughs> so he no, no, he didn't say that. Your head <laughs> No, I'm not in my Adversity, no stranger here. Just three months later, breast cancer, an interim medication for her oh. depression, and now a visit to her cancer doctor. I said, I, I hope I die on the table. I seriously hope that I die on the table. My sister started oh to cry. Oh, my God. But I just can't go on when I get like that. I just, I can't, I mean, breast cancer didn't phase me. Hello, exactly! Because I was already down so low that when someone told me I had breast cancer, there was no more steps to go down. Oh, After yeah. that battle, there was one more change to her medication. And then, perhaps the greatest relief of all, normalcy. I feel completely fine. I sleep at night. I get up in the morning and look forward to the day. I was listening for a sound. She still teaches, trying to undo what her third grade teacher did to her, humiliating her in the classroom so many years ago. I thought it was wrong then, and I think it's wrong now. So I wanted to go public with it so that people understand what depression is. She enjoys her husband's political career, helping swear him in last month as acting governor, replacing Jim McGreevy, being rewarded right. in her personal when, cause. When, when he was being sworn in, she was running around like Giuliani's kid during his... <laughs> <laughs> during Andrew... <laughs> Waving and dancing behind... <laughs> Do you solemnly swear... <laughs> Do you solemnly swear to keep this bitch locked up in the basement while you're doing important political things? <laughs> Was that Farley on SNL that, that played yeah, yeah, him yeah, in yeah. the goof they did? Yeah. That was the funniest goddamn bit. Farley playing the Giuliani's kid at the inauguration. This is almost over. The personal cause when on his first day as governor, he had breakfast with the patients at Greystone Psychiatric Hospital oh, in Morris wonderful. County. Feeling the so treat. much more needs to be done. The poorest of the poor don't get the availability of the same kind of treatment that my wife gets. And that's where we really lack it. And still, she lives with this. Do you fear that you will have another bout of depression as you did two years ago, mm -hmm. for example? I do. 
I fear it the same way, the same way I have breast cancer, I worry about cancer coming back. I worry about the depression coming back because I know it's going to separate me from my world. I live in fear of it. I'm afraid. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Story is to be written. With luck, love, and continued good treatment, it has many years to go. But in sharing her story with us, she has written a chapter that few get a chance to tell. And if you want more information on depression and other forms of mental illness, you can visit our website at eatabullet.com. Such as the National Institute of Mental Health. And the turnaround that she describes is actually relatively recently, All right? within about the last year and a half. Uh-oh. Oh. Brian Thompson, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Oh, stop. I'm, I'm, d I'm done with these news people. Brian, thank you very much for bringing that thank to our you. attention. Thank, thank you. you so much. They don't care. They were like, oh, my God, are you rolling tape on this whack job? Wow. They don't care. There's no sincerity in the news. So what happens? Sincerity is the word of the of the show today, Anthony. Right. This false sincerity. Wow, well, Brian. Of it. Brian, thank you so much. Yeah. So glad that we're now educated on depression. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm so concerned about this. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, in sports, you yeah. know. <laughs> Anthony, Greg, did you um, did yeah. you uh, yeah. did you read the rest of this? That uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's move on. So that's uh, callous behavior. That's uh, the audio that we. Yeah. Uh, we played a while ago ourselves there. and uh, So New Jersey Governor Richard Cody yesterday came out swinging at a shock jock who suggested on the air that the state's first lady was crazy because she once suffered from postpartum depression. Cody and Craig Carton, co-host of the Jersey Guys show on Blah Blah Blah, first mixed it up Tuesday when they ran into each other in a hallway at the Trenton area station. Cody was there to do his monthly call-in show. A day earlier, Carton had mocked Mary Jo Cody's depression, which caused her to have a murderous uh, to have murderous thoughts after the birth of her oh. first child 20 years ago. Her husband, who became governor when Jim McGreevy resigned last year, has long been an advocate for the mentally ill, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. Sure. I feel bad for the guy, obviously, uh, that he has to deal with that. What Governor Cody ought to do is approve the use of medical marijuana so women can have a joint and relax instead of putting their babies in a microwave. Carton said, according to <laughs> the Star Ledger. There's a great statement. Was he serious? <laughs> you can't argue that. <laughs> just legalize pot. It's just a hack line. Relax, bitch. It's just a hack line. Women who claim they suffer from this postpartum depression must be crazy in the first place. Wow, you're real informed, too, buddy. <laughs> uh, the next day, Cody uh, pounced on Carton at the radio station. I wish I weren't governor. I'd take you out, Cody said, according to the newspaper's account of the exchange. Yesterday, Cody was still in a mood to fight, albeit in the safer setting of a news conference. I defend my wife like any man or husband would, Cody said. He also said he told Carton he would take him outside, not out. Mm -hmm. On air, Carton demanded his own apology. Relax, Craig, relax. Funny, that's the same thing uh, McGreevy said to him. If I weren't governor, I'd take you out. <laughs> Line of the day. Line of the day. Beat that. Oh, that's funny. And then he goes, if I don't get an apology from him and he owes me one, he will wind up the same way McGreevy did, out of office, based on the power of this show, Carton said. Uh, he thinks he got McGreevy out of uh, office? Who knows? End up like McGreevy did, out of, his, out of office, based on the power of this show? He doesn't owe him an apology. The guy, it's like now the radio guy's being a baby. It's like I right. actually admire this guy, Cody and his wife, for saying this stuff. Of course. I mean, you got to tease him about it. Don't look, don't expect to not be teased. Right. But I, I do admire them for being very honest like that. And that's a nice thing to see a politician and his wife come out and be all like, yeah, we're not yeah, perfect. A little honesty, and then he's sticking with her. You know, that's kind of a tough thing to go through, I'm sure. So. And some douchey radio guy said something, which would certainly could come from this show. The governor's <laughs> like, hey, shithead, I'll take you outside. Right. He's acting like a human being and a man. You can't demand an apology and then, and then you go on the air and, you, and you're a pussy going i i demand a, an apology yeah why demand an apology from a guy who's being a man yeah the guy yeah. is just being a man you goof on his wife you goofed and made fun of the guy then you got to expect something in return right and then he can't turn around and be a pussy and go i demand an apology or i'm apology. gonna get him kicked out of office that's a that's a wimpy thing to could say you imagine man. could you actually for a second imagine this governor sitting down and going Oh, I'd like to apologize to the radio guy <laughs> for for goofing on my wife, and then me saying that I would like to, you know, take him outside. It's not going to happen, and and there's no reason it should. He's a hack, and uh, he's getting some exposure on TV today, and he's all excited, so he's going to make the best of it. The governor? 
I don't know anything about uh, Cody. They're the hack. I don't, why, why you nah, calling the, the Jersey guys are hacks, and they get some coverage today. God bless them, and they're going to take advantage of it. But to sit there and go, I demand an apology. That's you're a wimp. Yeah, stop. You're it. a wimp. You demand an apology. Why don't you get into? You should have got right into his face when you had the chance in the hallway. If you if it, you were so offended by what he had to say to you. There were babies cooking <laughs> inside the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Adult. Oh. <laughs> Baby's oh. drowning with fit too. Right there like. in their own tub. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 I demand an apology. You yeah. have a problem with the guy. You, want, you should have smacked him in the face. He was right there in the hall with you. Electric shocks right through her head. <laughs> Being held down by other men shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so there she is, your crazy mommy. <laughs> oh. oh, you'd have been better off in Indonesia. Ah, I couldn't think of the next line. Your crazy mommy. <laughs> You could add swim, bitch, swim, yeah. because you try to drown the kid in the bathtub. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to get, get it to rhyme, man. Oh. <laughs> Trying to wash this kid, but wanna drown it. Somebody stop me! <laughs> <laughs> he did it! <laughs> You're listening to Anthony and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony uh, did that rhyme, and he's thinking somebody tried to top me. <laughs> uh, no, don't do it with the music. You'll kill me. <laughs> oh, who's that? No vocals. Nice. Oh, there's no vocals. This kid is good. He already took yeah, out the vocals. Like 97 that. should have thought of this. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> Just play without the vocals. There was a Please. time. <laughs> there oh. will be vaginas. Rick. <laughs> Goddamn Rick. We ought to try to get Rick on the phone. Have you tried to call him off the air or anything? No, I haven't talked to him in months, man. We Not... kinda, I might try to give him a call. Just ask him, hey, Rick, what's going on? Oh, Got a job? <laughs> I wanted to call Todd, too, just to see. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I actually thought of doing that yesterday. Get I'm the like, bottom. Get the scoop on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, I demand an apology. Yeah. That's that's such a... I know. Yeah, come on, man. You, you, the guy, look, again, the guy, is, he's the governor. He's got to take it. But it's his wife. He, he loves his wife, and they came out openly Obviously. and honestly. Yeah. yeah. you, you got to yeah. give him a break if he gets pissed off at you for teasing the baby in the microwave reference. <laughs> of course. Let's, Which is teasable. Let's go to John and uh, <laughs> Poughkeepsie. Hey, uh... Hey, boys. Hey. Hey, sweetie pie. Hi, John from Poughkeepsie. Thanks for calling. Not, not you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> bravo, my friend. Ah, that was good. That's why you got to listen to the show every day. <laughs> wow. That's really good, bro. Wow. I don't know if anybody picked up on the fact <laughs> that this lady was getting shock therapy when she was pregnant with the second kid. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She had to be off the drugs. Yeah, she was pregnant. Go but... drown baby. Go <laughs> drown baby. Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, that's a little out. flower. Yeah. All right. uh, he knows when to punch out. Oh, uh, that was very funny. funny. This Not is you. This is my my son's Kevin and. <laughs> <laughs> Tragic uh, existence. I'll bet you that kid has sex with a woman. She uh, lights up like a pinball machine and pays off in silver dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is some sick stuff. Oh, what a kook. Looking at the baby and you're, you're just washing him. Washing his little head with some Johnson's baby shampoo. You know, you know how the, the moms do that? They take a little handful of water and, and cover his eyes and yep. pour it over his little head. And she's just thinking, <laughs> <laughs> just take that little oven stuff a roaster body and hold it under. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a little hairless hen. <laughs> Oh. That's awful. Does the baby shut its eyes or are those blue things just staring at you through the oh, water? Oh, my God. He, he doesn't know the thoughts. Mom, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm too young to realize you're insane. What? <laughs> then he handed her a mental health book. Mama, this for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 
You know what? Too bad her mother didn't call her and say that you need to replace it in your life. What you have to do is if you want to kill your baby, you buy a puppy and drown that instead. <laughs> drown that first. Oh, that's great. Oh, things are going so well for you now. <sighs> Here's the baby. Huh. Oh, oh, look at me. <laughs> Out of the tub and into the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Guess she's trying to dry me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I would see his ten toes and just want to bite one off. <laughs> <laughs> He's throwing up formula. Oh. <laughs> awful. It's oh. absolutely awful. All right. Wow.